you look past the higher ups of the device, the Quest 2 was a revolutionary piece of technology for the VR space within the past year. With more than 8.7 million units sold in 2021 alone, over half of which were in the holiday season, it's no wonder we see a spike in AR and VR interests. Even the Quest 2 is at a high of 47% of all VR headsets on Steam alone. Compare that to second place, Valve Index, with a measly 14.4%. I think it's very clear how far the quest has risen this year, but that leaves the question, how is the quest after one year? Well, lucky for you, I know, because I bought the Oculus Quest 2 64GB version back in February of 2021 as my first ever VR headset. And after three long dreaded days of waiting, it finally came and I immediately fell in love. I played it so much, almost never putting it down, and since then I've put almost a thousand hours on SteamVR alone and even more on Oculus PC app and Quest standalone. I've fallen in love with the technology, always on my mind and always having a desire for more composition and new hardware. I mean heck, the Quest is still my main headset to this day. I mean it's apparent that this is an outstanding headset, for the most part. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have its drawbacks. For starters, the battery on my Quest has severely depleted, the longevity of one charge having lasted from 3 to 4 hours without being plugged in beforehand, to 3 hours playtime with being plugged in, and 1.5 to 2 hours with no external power, it's not that great. This isn't too bad considering the default battery life for the Quest is expected to be between 2 to 3 hours playtime, but I've personally seen the degrading over time on my end, so that's just me. Second up is the classic head strap problem. At only a couple of months with the headset, it began getting really, really, really uncomfortable for me to play virtual reality, and that's thanks due to Meta supplying us with a piece of garbage head strap. And I know, I know this is just to get us to buy the ridiculously overpriced Oculus Pro head strap, but you know, I just managed to pull out the $40 and spend it on a third party one, which works just as good, if not better, than the name brand Pro head strap. On top of that, my Quest charging and or link port, uh, the USB-C port has seemingly become more finicky to plug stuff into. Sometimes Oculus Link disconnects, sometimes it doesn't charge, though this is a very rare occasion, but still happens nonetheless. Speaking of rare occasion, it is a very rare occasion that somebody remembers to subscribe to this channel. So if you do like the content over here on I Am Marinara, please consider subscribing. It will mean a lot to me. Now, let's talk about the impact of the Oc Meta Quest 2 on the VR community. Like I mentioned earlier, the Quest 2 had over 8.7 million sales in 2021, and that is absolutely insane because this allowed for many people, including myself, to experience virtual reality for the first time. And with its reasonable $300 price point, it acted as a great introduction to the AR and VR community. There were also a bunch of milestones for the AR VR industry, including the collaboration between Thrillseeker, AEX Lab, and Francis Suarez, the actual mayor of Miami, where they discussed the concept of virtual reality and the possibilities thereof. Suarez states, his thoughts on virtual reality by saying, quote, I think cities have a choice. They can choose to embrace this reality or they can choose to push it away, end quote. Suarez also added onto this by later stating, we understand that it is an unavoidable reality in our world, that this is going to be a part of it. And I say, well said, Francis. I agree. The Quest 2 has brought upon so many good ideas and have potentially altered the way we work, play, and hang out. I think this is our future. We know that I think this. I mentioned it in my spending 24 hours in virtual reality video, which you should check out. It's here, and I think it's here to stay. There have been a lot of changes upon the Quest 2 since I bought it. Facebook changed their name to Meta, and I've rebranded the Oculus Quest 2 to the Meta Quest 2, which I'm still salty about. Also, on Power Up, the Quest doesn't show the Oculus logo anymore. Very sadly, instead it shows a blue Meta logo symbolizing a Meta Quest instead of Oculus Quest. Meta, ironically, brought virtual reality into the spotlight, and they carried the Quest 2 along with it. And though they tried to push their Metaverse, others decided that they're not gonna let that happen. Most people, including myself, think that the Metaverse shouldn't be overseen by one corporation. The Metaverse should be owned by everyone, and I'm not talking NFTs. 
Once again, referencing back to my spending 24 hours in VR video, I mentioned a metaverse is defined as a virtual reality space in which users can interact with a computer generated environment and other users. Not once did it mention anything about meta, and I know meta didn't directly say this, uh, but a lot of people think that this is their intent and can back it up. And the craziest thing, none of this would have happened without the introduction of the Oculus Quest 2. Meta announced this literally a year after the release of the Quest 2, and during this, they continued to push their Quest 2 as the main headset of the metaverse. It's clear that the Quest 2 was one of the most influential VR devices ever, based off of everything mentioned in the video, plus more. Even though some people get greedy and can seem to put a bad rep on the device, I think the Quest is a great headset. If you're looking to get into virtual reality, I highly recommend this headset. Because now is the time to get into it. Now is the time to pioneer it. Because in the very near future, everyone will be wearing them. Oh yeah, be right, be right.